Jack? With the email I sent you about that book. I know I got you a copy. I got my friend Wei Hong a copy. He lives in Brooklyn now. He grew up where I grew up in London Heights. Him living in Brooklyn. You guys have no excuse not to look each other up. I'll tell you why. All of us are told about me and Vampire Freaks. He can defuse them. Me being a racist. If I was a racist, I want to know. I would not know Wei Hong or have published a lot of black authors over years, as well as a Pakistani writer. If I was a bigot, I would have lasted in Blundell Heights because we had Asian American. I was 19 years old. My sister's now 19. I want to point something out with this book I gave you, I sent you. As I got this book for Christmas in 2006, I was a little creeped up by it. Yes. If you guys have this one, you guys are out there what? Have their Spiegel investigate report of 9-11. Completely deconstructed. It's really the story. I'm going to point something out on flight 93. Let me turn the pants here. Excuse me when I'm flipping here. Hold on. Give me a minute. I have to find it in a minute. All right, Zahra Jara was born in 1975, Lebanese. He was in United Airlines Flight 93. I'll tell you a little something a little horrific about this. When he was born, 1975. Jet, you're born in 79, right? The guy who slammed the South Tower was born in 1978. That's a little frightening. And when I point out the appendix of this book, reading it, the age of Eastern Terrace. Each one in that gap were about our age, between 1973 and 1981. So this is kind of a project I'm working on, that I invite you and Wei Han to co-write on. There's a reason for that. It was someone in our generation that did this. And what you said, you're you're kind of like the mayor of the biggest city in the internet, and it's very perfect. It's like, that's like New York City on the web. Because it's like, you have, two million, you have two million users, you kind of like a mayor. So what I invite you to do is kind of like playing a role of an ambassador in, a, in the publishing realm. You said you're looking for writers, right? Okay, this is what I was saying in my PDF. Lead by example. Become a published author. All the perceptions about my reputation perceive me. That guy who means. If you were getting a sense from the people who hate my guts, yeah, I can see it. But if you spoke my friends in Chicago, or my cousins, my reputation in Chicago is this. I keep my promises. I'm in my word. The heavy metal band Neutral Red could illustrate this. In 1999, when I came back to Illinois, in November, I was 23, I never had a chance to say goodbye to them because they made me feel more comfortable living there. When there was hardly anything to tell you metal wise in Iowa. If you read my article, a God is on trial, you'll see where I'm talking about it. What brought me out to Iowa was Jody Hughes and Truth. This book I have here, what I've sent to you, and we hung. That's a way to break the ice with each other. And you can and you can bring Tammy Purcell with you to show him Lake Fossil. That's what you know me as. The name you see on Tumblr is what Wei Hong knew me as. He knew me as my short name. So you see me on there hanging out with you guys on Tumblr. Don't be surprised if I reblog your two. And if you go with Tumblr on my blog, don't be surprised if you get a little in depth. And if you're saying too long debt ring on Tumblr. That doesn't fly because a lot of these a lot of these bloggers are very in depth with their blogs. They use the cut tail like Live Journal, but the difference between Tumblr and Live Journal, this is a little more interactive. As you can see in this blog, this video blog, and my blogs on WordPress and all that, you'll see what I'm trying to do there. How many of you can say they brought their influence in their old high school? As I did my one thousand. I got HP Lovecraft in my old high school number east. 
What I'm also looking to do is I'm going to get Richard Manson to high school. How I'm going to do that? I have a few ways. I'm brainstorming right now how I'm going to do it. Some, some of the writers on this is what I'm doing. One the teacher. We're trying to figure out how we can pull this off. This is not an easy task. Talk about 9 11 be a controversial thing because some of these kids now who are coming on your site, they're about 14, 15, they're too young. They were not even born yet when this came out. When this unfolded, my sister was probably about in first grade, second grade. And she's 19, she's born in 95. So what I'm looking to do here with the project is give this generation some wisdom. What we were like when we were 20, 19, 18 years old. So you 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 have a son, right? Okay. I have one too. My son's about 15 right now. I wish I could see him. But the system kind of screwed me over. As the guy in the council said, I had a raw deal. Like, they're about right. I have gotten raw deals. I made a career out of it though. So when I see people plagiarizing my work, I'm not amused. Where someone's saying they're not taking me seriously. When you took Lulu on, you gotta be taking it seriously enough. If you're smart enough to pull out a painting of Obama burning the Constitution on the 4th of July, and saw the Auditor Jackson asking how to take on Lulu, and I found out she just fucked up this painting. I go, holy shit. How'd she know about it? So, Victoria Jackson is now connecting me on LinkedIn. So, I think that's very cool. So, if you want to talk to some people in the industry, I'm getting in touch. I have a thousand people connecting me on my, my Facebook now privately. I'm on my blogs. I have 500 people following me via email. You have to admit, that's impressive. And I'm not a bestseller. I have 400 plus followers on my Twitter. So I have more followers outside of Vampires than you see on, on the site. If you're able to see that, you know, you know, you know, I'm on something legit here. You can touch my cousin. If you have any questions, you can talk to him. My cousin John used to work for the Illinois School of Illinois Center of Broadcasting. As I, when I wrote my piece originally, I didn't know he was still with the place or not. But in that conversation with you and him, he confirmed that he's working with a sister company. He's the reason why I'm on a set like Google Plus. He really uses Vampire Freaks at all. He's always on Google Plus though. So you man, you hook, hook up me there. I go, that's cool. I'm surprised you even know, know who I am now. You figure out my real name is Nicholas Pachillon. I kind of left a hint of that back in 05. But Jet, in 2004, you spoke to me on MySpace a year earlier, in May. You were sitting over uh, by a live journal group. I can't remember the name of the thing. They had a picture in a white background with a spiky hair. You had a, you had, spi you had, you had striped sleeves of some kind. That's what I remember. And then I ended up finding you on, by like, sheer chance, on MySpace. Pulling aside just before I got published in print the first time. It's just as I got published in the House of Pain. So you think I'm uh, lying about that? Why would I lie about that? But pulling aside, when you you're, when you were just getting started out, you said you're a Harley celebrity, Jet. You be a published author for the first time. You already had the following, man. Play it up. And I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna be probably giving you copies at this count because I'm working with Create Space. And my classmates are also co writing this project. So you'll be talking with them too. And like I said, my PDF. If Mal sees this, she's invited to join, but she has to get approval of Monica Fogate. If she gets published by Monica, gets approved by Monica, I'll forgive her. But the thing is, she has to be a little informed about. Journalistic fraud. You have to crack down on that, man. Reason being, I speak from experience in this guy. I had a deal with David Blair. I sought out Jason Blair because I'm going to need his help, man. I'm a I would ask him, in his unique situation, how would he weigh in on someone like the Pollard or Blair or some of these other jokers out there who got expelled for this? Either got arrested or expelled for putting their name on something they didn't write. 
So think about it there. What if there was something you wrote and you found out someone put their name on it? And they didn't write it and they got published. And they make about $100 and you haven't got a damn thing for it. Would you be all pissed? I would be. So, Der Spiegel. This was translated to English. And published by St. Martin's Press. You're saying I'm a psycho. I'm not talking crazy here. I'm talking very rational. And you might think, when I say, no one cares about me. If I have a thousand people connected to me, I'm doing something right, man. So take what I say to heart, I'm going on on video here. As you're going to hear a band that I'm going to be playing at the beginning. They're on mp3.com and basically their record label got noticed by me. They're, they noticed me from my reviews of Vampire Kings. Their circle caught one of my in-depth reviews. As they were in the, a little more in-depth than Scott Waters was with the Light of Metal on his reviews. As I learned how to be a historian from him. Heavy Metal on became a historian of my reviews. And in some ways I branched out from there and started doing reviews again. I wrote my first movie review in a long time. First time during the death of Jersey Shore Shark Attack. I saw that movie about the time I came back from Richmond. I bought it on a whim. I got my first laptop. So that kind of movie, it, it's, it's interesting. I'll give them that. Joy of Tone being a horror film. Yeah, they say it's kind of funny. Him getting eaten by a shark. And they start doing an air jaws on a stage. If you are laughing today, you're thinking you're sick for laughing. You have to sit down and watch that movie. And you have to sit down and read this book. You, you probably understand the guy who wrote that film is also in our generation. He was born in 76. Our generation changed the rules, Jed. That's part of the reason why I want you to join me on this one. You changed the rules. You're a pioneer like me. I started in 97. Logan Campbell found me when I was 20 years old. Just like you were. When you remember things. Remember things for you. You came up with the vision in high school. Right on the grave. I didn't come up with the name. I was in college. My WordPress blog. As you see on WordPress. It's kind of like what I did in college. When I had my underground column. Which I posted up on a bulletin board. I wrote it on a Microsoft Word. Printed it up. And checked it on the student area. The entertainment students. I had someone ask me to write for an underground newspaper. I couldn't get in touch with them in time. And I was thinking I was getting right, I was getting published when I was in Iowa. But what happened there, I got locked up by my roommate. My then roommate, who had seven cats, murdered all my pets. I had drills, I had rodents, he used them for cat toys. You know how hideous that is when you think about it. When you work for a pet store for a year and seen a rat get chewed in half. By two other rats. It's a little grizzly. Yeah, that's a little grizzly. Seeing cannibalism happen. It's kind of gross. But when you're talking with someone like me, you gotta talk to me face to face. Because I'm not gonna raise my voice. I'm not gonna go say something real malicious. If I say something real controversial, like I said to that one, I guess I spent it for a allegedly racist comment. Is it because she was singling me out for a male and all this, saying I need to lock away? I was like, shut up, you Aboriginal. <laughs> I am not a racist, to be honest with you. I was trying to find something that had a little bit of a sting in the LR. Because she was singling me out for my own, and she was advocating a plagiarism. She was backing it up on a plagiarism at work when I was trying to defend it. So don't go speaking up for people who advocate for plagiarism. And saying you don't care, you know, you gotta think about this for a second, man. If I'm gonna go out length, I greatly on video on this. This goes probably 15, 16 minutes, maybe 17 if I pull this off. Right now it's at the 14 minute mark. If I read a book like Inside 9 11, I got that for Christmas. If you remember Fallen Eve, Michelle Russo from Vampire Freaks, she got me on the site. Jeffrey Swanson said, Get out of Vampire Freaks and promote your appearance in Gothic Fest. I agreed to do it. I was looked at it first, but now I I kind of feel like I'm there, but at the same time, 
I feel like I'm unwelcome because I argued with the moderator. It was like he told me he needed to crack down on people who plagiarized. As this happened, right around the time, just before David Boyer emerged. When I wrote God, this is my truck. It was just before that happened. And when you see on Honey Anna on Codex, that was one year after the events of Boyer. Just after I got tossed for the Van Perfect Skull on a corrupt vote. Nine people voted me out. Uh, 5,000 people. What do you think is a little off, man? You, you need to take a stand on this, man. You, you said, you thought I'd be honest. That was a little dishonest, man, on Slay's part. As I call him corrupt. He was corrupt. As Dark Freaks, I called him out too. I go, look, you need to be part of the solution or part of the problem. I guess you want to be part of the problem, right? Same with Digital Diarrhea here. He's also part of the problem. If he's not willing to speak up against academic fraud or journalistic fraud, then there's a problem. 